Hello and welcome to Tomeless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Morning Meadow. It is a 12 by 12. At least I'm pretty sure it's 12 by 12. And I did this painting back in, um, oh, I'd say February of this year. Um, this is a motif I've painted many times in the past. I'd have to say I've painted it in the square format and I've painted it in a rectangular format and I just can't seem to get enough. Um, I sold it a couple of times as well. The, uh, the paintings produced um, and I, I think it's just a very successful composition. It's one reason why I keep painting it and um, uh, I'd like to do more of this sort of thing. It's just, um, there's a bit, uh, this is really a painting based on light, I would say, and I captured the reference image uh, that I used for all of these paintings very early in the morning, um, many, many years ago, probably around 2008, and um, it's just really hard for me to get up and get out in the morning and, uh, you know, collect reference, but I'd like to do that. I may make a goal to do that in the near future. Uh, anyway, um, there's all sorts of different kinds of paintings I can do. I've got a folder uh, that I recently went through. Uh, I've collected almost a thousand uh, reference images that uh, some stronger, some poorer. But one thing that's very interesting is that uh, you know you can, um, as you progress as a painter, you can see potentialities in um, reference uh, that. Um, you wouldn't have seen before. You can see ways to make things work. Um, and this is because so much of learning about being a painter is a, a negative process. It's more about knowing what doesn't work, knowing what to leave out, uh, than it is about what to add in. And um, as I've mentioned many times on my blog um, and in the videos, this is one of the problems of using, using photos as reference at all because um, you'll have a tendency to just copy everything in the photo onto the um, painting and this is just going to give you a copy of a photo that's been done as a painting. Um, and fortunately, um, this is sort of a good thing because there's some pretty amazing programs out there. It's Pixama. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but you can load a, a picture of a person into that and just go nuts with all these amazing styles. And uh, um, speaking of someone that used to be a commercial illustrator, uh, you know, this would have had me quaking in my boots if I still was a commercial illustrator because you can get some pretty dang good, uh, interesting images. Uh, might not be quite as good as an actual illustration, but uh, considering that all you had to do was take a photo, um, load it up, and apply a filter um, to get an interesting result, uh, that's a lot less uh, effort and money and time than employing an illustrator. So um, while I think there'll always be work for illustrators out there, um, you know, just like every other field of endeavor since the beginning of the computer era. Um, I mean, people used to be employed sending type all day for a living. You know, those people don't do that anymore. And it's all because of the impact of computers um, and on and on and so forth. But the thing about painting is that um, a computer is not going to be able to do this, at least not for the foreseeable future. I, I've speculated that. Uh, you know, with these uh, 200 or so videos I have up on YouTube, uh, you could get... Uh, oh, by the way, I should mention that the Pixma utilizes artificial intelligence to uh, get its result. It's not like a typical filter, a Photoshop filter that might apply an algorithm. It is applying algorithms of a far greater structure and complexity than any Photoshop filter. Um, anyway, that said, um, there's nothing like the filter of actually being a human being uh, and utilizing that to its utmost. And so this is one of the reasons why what you leave out is very, very important in painting and how you choose, what you choose to delineate and how much you uh, choose to delineate it 
is very, very critical uh, to producing an attractive painting. And this is something that we have to uh, unlearn, uh, really, as modern artists, because artists in the old days, before photography was preeminent, um, you know, there was no way they could capture all of the detail of the reality in front of them. Um, so the, some of them tried. I mean, that this is what's behind the uh, the Hudson River School and people like that with extremely detailed uh, landscape paintings that are, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, totally awesome, but not as good as the tonalist movement which came after no. which was rendering uh, a lot less detail and putting a lot more evocative human emotion into the work and uh, that's not to say there wasn't a lot of uh, emotion in the work of the Hudson no. River School in fact a lot of times these guys are referred to as uh, the luminists uh, because of the luminescent uh, spiritual quality of their paintings so I don't need to diss the Hudson River School guys to say that tonalism um, was a step further and really the end as far as I'm concerned. Um, after that landscape painting didn't get significantly better in any real way. Um, certainly the Impressionists uh, were good at capturing certain types of scenes in certain types of ways but the uh, kind of scientific basis for the rationale behind that style is necessarily limiting and um, doesn't incorporate the, the spiritual aspect of being a human being as much to, to my view. Sure, you're a human being uh, having a spiritual experience and you could be doing a painting uh, while all that's going on, but uh, are you invested in um, conveying something that is uplifting and evocative of the reality uh, that is uh, accessible to us at, at special times and in special ways you know that's what tonalism is going for um, whereas I see impressionism you know is really about capturing oh look you know there's uh, she's wearing a white dress and there's a green glow on it from the grass below her feet and it's not cool which is cool I mean yeah but it's technical and you have to go beyond technique and to me that's why tonalism is the preeminent form of painting and anyway uh, getting back to where I started I have a reference image and this reference image is not so special it's not so great I, but I made a lot of great paintings from it it's it's fed into uh, a lot of great paintings that and each one is uh, quite different and uh, you, while you can tell that it's the same uh, two trees um, and a bit of grass with some light on it um, every time I've done it it looks quite a lot different and that's because I'm different and this is one of the great things about painting um, anyway to get back to like uh, the 200 videos it's, uh, it's possible at some point in the uh, future artificial intelligence would have gotten to a point where it's mapped uh, my brush strokes uh, stroke by stroke for hundreds if not thousands of paintings by that point in time and is able to emulate my approach to at least laying paint down but what it's going to have difficulty doing is emulating my approach to what I leave out and um, that's always changing uh, even for me so I think it's going to take uh, artificial intelligence quite a while before I mean I've seen articles you know like uh, here this is a painting you know if we've taken this photograph and this uh, artificial intelligence is rendered it in the style of Van Gogh but it doesn't really look like Van Gogh you know it doesn't and it, even in the best case scenario it looks like a photo that Van Gogh maybe painted over the top of you know because that artificial intelligence hasn't got the ability doesn't have the lifetime of experience and um, desire to create art that informs uh, this process of elimination and this process of perfection and perfecting your art which is you know part of the uh, artistic zeitgeist I guess I would say um, so that's it for my uh, philosophical deep end for you guys today uh, it is Sunday um, 
Sunday, June 11th, in the year of our Lord, 2017, and um, not in the studio today, it's my day off. Um, I did put up a uh, day four of uh, volume two of 25 Days of Tonalism yesterday, a nice painting by after Arnold, Arnold Bachlin, not technically a tonalist, but you know, um, whatever, I can do what I want. That's my channel so uh, we did that and uh, I did some paintings yesterday mostly I just did drawings uh, yesterday I had prepped some boards earlier in the week and uh, doing a few drawings I'm trying to get things uh, still going for my show which is gonna be in about a month or so so we are uh, getting close there um, and trying and endeavoring to do larger paintings I've had some I had a success this week I had a, with a 14 by 20 um, whereas in the previous uh, couple weeks I, I did some larger paintings were just okay uh, and the thing that irks me about the larger paintings is when I fail it takes so much more time to fail than it does <laughs> on the little ones but uh, we've all got our crosses to bear and uh, that's one of mine and um, at some point it's looking like I may be able to uh, be getting into a larger studio at the uh, Quarry Art Center there um, and in that case I, I hope to set up a a big easel where I can actually stand and um, I'm in sort of in the um, off moments here and there investigating possibly making a move on to canvas uh, for the larger works as well so we'll have to see how that goes anyway I can see we're getting sort of close to the end here um, I got some work up on Sachi if you're into my uh, stuff go check it out uh, we're, we're, we're you know I'm gonna I don't know if I'll get anything up on Sachi today, but um, maybe this week sometime I'll get some more stuff up there. Also, uh, you can go to my website, landscapepainter.co.nz, and uh, you can follow my blog through there. On the blog, speaking of the blog, is a uh, nice higher resolution version of this image we're painting today that so you can check out, as well as two zoom ins of uh, showing the detail of the brushwork and things. So that's always there for you and a little bit of text about the uh, painting as well um, I'll be back next week and uh, with a, uh, another day five of the 25 days of tonalism line two and another one of my paintings so uh, meanwhile I would like you to take good care and stay out of the